G'day, Petty from PPA. Welcome to this week's show, The Proper Investment Guys, the only place to be for real facts, real figures, and real flaming hotspots, and NDIS. So that's what today's about. It's about the six mistakes that people are making when it comes to investing in the NDIS scheme. If you haven't seen NDIS before, then that's the National Disability Insurance Scheme. It's all about helping the people with a disability get out of the accommodation they're in right now, which is nursing homes and hospitals and boarding houses where they're not getting the care they need and they're not in the community. So it's about getting them out in the community, get better care and a better lifestyle uh, for those people with a disability. So that's a very good uh, you know, ethical investment as well. Uh, and it's also costing the government millions of dollars right now to house uh, the people with a disability in these accommodations. So their idea is to let, let investors buy these houses and then the people can uh, move into these homes and have a carer in the house with them. And that allows the, uh, the people with a disability to have a better lifestyle, but it also allows the government to uh, you know, to, to save money because it costs apparently up to a million dollars to a year to leave somebody in a hospital or eighty to hundred thousand dollars in a nursing home. Can you imagine being you know 35, 40, 50 years old in a retirement village and you know, watching people passing passing away. So you know, and you know it's not the best environment for them. Um, so obviously getting them out of those accommodations into new accommodations is, is a good idea. So it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. The investor can get to very high returns, you know, from 80,000 to, you know, 250, 300,000, depending on what you're purchasing, obviously. Uh, for those high returns, you're obviously buying, you know, multiple dwellings or villas or, or, or apartment, small apartment complex or down to just a, a, a small home. So there's all there's dual occupancies, there's houses, there's a lot of the houses just, just look like a normal house. Uh, obviously on the outside, inside there's, it looks like a normal house as well. There's just a bunch of certain specifications which have to be built to make sure they are compliant um, and, uh, and they have the access for people with disability. And, and or whatever their needs are, whether it's physical disability or, uh, or mental disability. So. But importantly, these six mistakes are very common uh, that people are doing when they're investing in this space. And I just wanna make sure that you, know, you do know these things. So if you are gonna invest in NDIS, you can actually make sure that uh, you, know, you do it correctly. Because uh, it it's a, is a big investment, like any investment. Uh, and you wanna make sure you do diligence before you make a decision that you, are, uh, that you are doing the right thing and you're 100% confident in those decisions. So let's get stuck into it. Number one. The six most common mistakes. Number one is building without an SDA, a SIL, or a, a support coordinator. So SDA is a specialist disability accommodation provider. They're like the, the property managers of the property. They, they place the participants in the homes, match them together, do all the paperwork that's required to make the, your home as an investment lodged in with the NDIS, uh, with the 20 year compliance uh, certification for that home. Uh, then they deal with the SIL providers, which are the su supported independent living. They're the carers. They put the overnight um, on-site assistant, which is the carer in the home to make sure <clears throat> the participants are well looked after. There might be multiple. There's all types of setups depending on the income of participants. And then the support coordinator, they're like the, like the manager of the participant that helps them with their, with their care, whether they go to the physio or you know, in the accommodation or whatever it might be that they need help with. Okay, but often people are building houses and they do not have these people involved from the start. Like we do deal with SILs, we do deal with support coordinators, but we, we predominantly deal with, uh, in our opinion, the best SEAs in the country who have access to uh, participant pathways of numerous SIL providers and numerous support coordinators. So, it's importantly, if you're building a house, and you don't have these people. It's it's a you are you know this, yes there is you know, over four hundred thousand potential participants to move into these homes Australia wide, according to uh, you know um, the the stats out there. But the the key is you know if you haven't got these people working with you, it's going to be very hard just to just to build a house and hope you'll find some participants later. Okay, so make sure before you build a home, you have you know, a good quality SDA or a SIL provider or an SDA that has the connections with SIL providers and support coordinators, okay? Very important. Number two, building just to spec. 
just to spec. I say you must build a spec number one in Paul or you won't get the compliance and the tolerances are very tight. Uh, you know, if you're looking down a, a wider hallway, which uh, it has to be in wider doorways, you know, the, 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 the rise and fall of a footpath, for example, all these things have to, be, have to be very tight tolerances or you don't get compliance, let alone the specifications within the property as well, so uh, in the inclusions. So, but many people out there uh, trying to make their, their building houses that just meet specifications, therefore, to, try, to try to keep that price down as low as possible, therefore the yields look higher if you, if, if you look at the, the returns that they're on the NDIS website for a certain type of dwelling, uh, which is not the key, okay? If you are just building just a spec, more than likely you, you may not get participants in that home because they have choice they are just like no different than you and I. Uh, if they also have uh, their idea what what they want to live in, and just building to spec is probably not going to get you the participants you want in your home. Therefore, not giving you the returns you need uh, to make this a, a very sustainable and uh, successful investment. So, build above spec. Um, here at PPA, uh, yeah, we are always building above specifications, always talking to the SGAs, always looking for how do we improve the homes, the designs of the homes. We've got multiple different floor plans now that we've, we've worked on and our houses have got, have got larger, there's no doubt, as time goes on because originally what the SGAs asked us to build is different what they're asking us to build now and that could can maybe keep involving. Uh, I think we're at a point now where we really have you know, worked a lot with different SGAs come up with what is the right design. And you can be sure, back to one step one, that every property that the PPA does build is back is based on the fact that the SGAs do uh, have requested that home or that they have incoming participants into that into this like into that into this dwelling. So very important. Uh, you know, number three, building for high physical support and a carer. And you know, look, this is an option. You kill, you can build a, a full participant home with a carer. Um, uh, HPS stands for high physical support, which is the highest uh, level of care requirement for someone with a disability, a physical disability. Okay, so look, again, we just do and reflect what our SDAs tell us, and, uh, and they've always said we, do, we will never want a full participant home. Uh, because it's very unlikely you'll ever get four participants in that house, especially at high physical support, because uh, the, the reality is they're getting, they're, they're getting people out of these group homes into these smaller homes, so three participants is the maximum that they recommend. But there's many companies out there that are flogging the four participants, because obviously four equals four times the returns, which is obviously higher, higher returns, which makes the, the investment look absolutely more outstanding than it already is. So, but just be wary of that, uh, you know, unless you've got income participants moving that house, and they're, they're, they're pretty much guaranteed to you, then I would not be buying that property. We certainly won't be providing that for you if you come to PPA because we know the SGAs do not want that. We deal with multiple SGAs Australia-wide. Uh, so I guess I'll add that uh, Australia-wide is very important. Many people in our space are just flogging the death out of South East Queensland. You want to be looking at, there is certainly demand there. We've, 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 we've got a number of houses under construction based on our SDA requirements. Our SDAs now though have their quota until these houses are built and filled and then, they're, then they're, they're, they've uh, said they will request more homes when the time comes. But right now they have their quota. So look at other areas in the country to build these. Uh, okay, so number four, buying low percentage guarantees. There is a people out there that are recommending that you can, you know, you can you can buy into a uh, into a uh, like a maybe a, a apartment or a, um, a, a townhouse complex. Look, if this is for you, this is okay. That they offer you a low percentage return. They'll and they'll keep the cream of that uh, returns, but they're giving you a guarantee for a, a number of years. Look, yeah. If this for you, you certainly can go for that. Uh, you've got to be asked that question, do they really have returns? Often when there's guarantees involved, that means that you're paying too much for the property. Uh, so those they, they've got some fudge factor in there to make up for that, uh, that difference in the, in the guarantee if, you haven't got, if they haven't got participants to pay, start paying their rent. If they have got participants and you've got hypothetically two in there, which might be $100,000 a year, and, and your returns are actually 14, 15%, and they're taking and giving you six, seven, eight percent, whatever it might be, then is that 
you know, shouldn't you be getting that money yourself? You pay for this place. You don't need to have that guarantee. But again, that is your your sure investment. You must just make sure you do due diligence around that. And if you're happy with a, a lower return of six, seven percent, maybe, then that's still a very good return. Don't get me wrong. Now you think what you know up until NDIS was available, the only way that we could get those sort of returns right now uh, is through our, our multi lease houses, and then people love those houses. Uh, there are great investments. You can get uh, you know almost a ten percent return. Uh, with those, and they're, they're just again, each room is leased uh, individually through a, a property management company that specialises in multi leases and have people on a waiting list. So, we build houses where they need those houses to be built, where they have demand for uh, people just to, to, just to rent uh, uh, because it saves them money rather than renting an entire house. So, you certainly can get those returns without going down the NDI's path, um, and you know. In my opinion, I would probably go down that path of multi-lease before taking a, a, a low percentage NDIS return building a specialist house. That's just my opinion. It's, it's definitely your investment, not mine. Uh, number five, uh, building like a traditional investment. Now, what I mean by that is, I think uh, predominantly why we are so busy with NDIS is because of our model. You know, we start with a participant, we, we talk to the SDA, the SDA then helps us to, to identify the best locations and the, and the plan they want for their income participants. They might be incoming or they might have, they know they have participant demand in a certain city or location within the city. And then we put together those designs, but it's all based starting with the participant. And then, then the designs go, to play, go, to, go, go into place, the house gets constructed, the SDA secure the participants in that, in that time frame, the house gets handed over, the SDA then manages that property, the seal puts the carrier in there and, and, it, and it goes forward. Uh, many people in our space, it gets back to number one, they're, they're building a house first, like a traditional investment, where you build a house, you give it to a property manager, um, and then they rent the house out for you. you know, you, you, you wait till the house is finished, built, and then you find a property manager because they can then rent the house out. Okay, so you know that's there's nothing wrong with with investing in property that way. I mean, PPA has been doing this for over twelve years. Uh, we we will look at the micro location of a city. Where's the best city in the country to invest right now, based on capital growth? And there's many good cities right now. We know that's going up. Then where's the micro location within that city where there is high um, you know tenant demand, very low vacancy rates, and a need for a specific type of house to be built. Uh, this is what we specialise in for years, and then the house is finished, and the house is, is then uh, handed over to the property manager. The property manager then you know, rents that house out. Uh, we even offer a, a first tender assurance where we'll pay rent until the house is finished. We've spent almost zero money over the past 12 years because the houses have always rented quickly um, after the house is completed, or even often before the house is completed, that the property manager has tenants were almost waiting to move in. So that is a good model if you are for traditional investment, but make sure you get those, those locations, that micro locations right, and that, that low vacancy rate right uh, before you do that. But when it comes to NDIS, to do that, um, build a house, get it finished, look around for an SDA, find an SDA that'll take it on, and then actually try to find participants is not the way you want to do the NDIS uh, investment. Okay, because you, you, you know, importantly, you know, the SDA has already been speaking. To, if it's in construction, they're talking, they're, they're showing the house to sill providers and, and, and participants and, and, and um, support coordinators well before the house is finished. So they're starting placing those participants before, beforehand. And in many cases, you know, the, our SDAs already have participants to move in. They've requested the house to be built, the house has been designed, you know, fit for purpose for those income participants, and they move into that home on completion. So, you know, that's the way to do NDIS, not starting, not like a traditional investment. Okay, a traditional investment is fine. Uh, if you want that, please reach out, we're happy to help. But um, when it comes to NDIS, don't do it that way. Uh, number six, and the lucky last one, building in a saturated, loca saturated location. I've, I've sort of touched on that before. Just make sure there is demand uh, in, in, a, in that location, in that city. Look, there's, look, there's no doubt, if you look at it, there is a demand map on the NDIS website. You can put in postcodes in there and show you where there's the demand. Now, SDA say that's a bit outdated. They are, they, I, know they, I believe they update it, but I don't know how regularly, but more and more people are, are applying for the NDIS funding. Uh, so those numbers aren't, or can't be kept up to date. Um, and then they also, the SDA has also tell us that there's many uh, participants inside group housing, which already have funding who aren't actually on those numbers 
but they need to be taken out of these uh, these terrible, you know, horrible some of the words we hear about these old these old rundown group houses and out into the, into these new homes. So those numbers aren't even on there. So. There's been there's been certainly times when the SDA says to us that we want to build a final block of land and build a, a certain type of property in this uh, uh, suburb, and we've looked at the looked at that map and gone the, the demand map and gone hang on, but there's there's no demand there for participants. But then they'll go no, but there there is hundreds there in these group houses that need to be housed. So so yeah, that's so I guess the biggest thing is is you know we only build where the SDAs want. Uh, and they ha SDAs now have to sign off on the plans uh, before they go to, through to the certifier, which was, that, that's only reasonable new legislation. It's always been the way with PPA, but that will that will certainly stop um, you know, people just building houses anywhere um, and in saturated markets. So, so again, I touch on the fact that I believe parts of Melbourne, um, when SDA told us the other day, there's over 300 houses, empty house on a portal. They were built to the old LHA standards apparently. So, you know, these new standards that we've been building to since 2019, that come into play in, uh, we, we started building NDIS back in October 2019 when the new specs came out which don't actually come into play until July 2021, this year, but the SDAs back in, in 2019 recommended we started building straight away to those new standards as we've always built too. So it, it's just better, better, bigger homes, better spec uh, out for the people with disability. So that's important. But um, again, if you're just buying houses, like in, in, the, in Melbourne that don't have, that don't have a an SDA or a silver provider attached to it, or you don't, or you're buying in Southeast Queensland, for example, and they don't have an SDA or silver provider attached to it, um, then you know you are buying in areas where people are selling a lot of these houses. Again, if you already have a property in construction uh, and you have a, a, a whether it's with PPA or some other SDA or silver provider, then, you, then I'm sure you are fine. But when it comes down to um, yeah, for people who are getting into the market now, and you know you won't see from PPA uh, unless it's a unless it's a fallover, a, a new property right now in in you know, certain parts of Brisbane, because like as I said before, the SDAs already have their quota for now, um, and then when these are completed and 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 uh, uh, least, then they will then request more. So, but in, again, in certain areas and certain locations. So, just be aware of that you just don't want to just go out and buy on the back of these high returns and, and in areas that are I mean, everyone seems to be flogging. So, it's typical in the property investment space, and then that's why PPA has always been different, uh, trying to change the way people invest in property to do the best we can to give you the best, um, you know. Uh, advice around locations and build and quality control and those sort of things. So those are the, the six mistakes. I think I even threw a seventh one in there. But look, feel free to reach out to us if you do have any questions. We'd love to help you further. Uh, there's no doubt NDIS is a great investment. Um, I just read an article then that the, the government's putting another 13 point something billion dollars into it. Uh, and I know there's the, there's been some talk in the governments about about how they're approving um, uh, the participants for the NDIs. That's uh, something that that's the government's doing. Nothing to do with the, with what we do. Um, but importantly, uh, it's certainly a great scheme to help people with disability get back in the community and better care. So, look, and if you want to know the best locations for. The, you know, so you're not going into saturated markets and what markets uh, that you should be looking at, what cities and what locations, and certainly reach out to us. We are putting together a uh, uh, with our SDAs a bit of a, uh, a guide booklet to give our clients uh, when they come through to us to actually have a better understanding of where they could invest uh, when it comes to NDIS uh, and what is the best locations for them based on on their budgets, based on the, what they already have in their investment portfolio. If you've already got multiple properties already, you might, you might want to diversify in a different city. This is a different investment. You know, this is definitely a very high cash flow driven investment. There's obviously still capital growth uh, in there as well. You do pay more for NDIS than a normal home, so that you might take a year or two to catch up on the median uh, with your uh, purchase price, but then you obviously there's capital growth to be there as well. Your returns are indexed with inflation. The returns, as I said, are very high. Uh, you know, for any investor looking for a very strong cash flow investment, 
uh, and, and, and at least with our SDAs, they generally must the same. They generally go for a 10 plus 5 plus 5, those 20 year lease. So yeah, it certainly is a, a great investment. Look, I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, stay tuned next week. Uh, we're gonna, we'll, we'll drill down on you know what are the six positives around the NDIS uh, investment and how you can make, how you can actually get them in your uh, you know in your investment and ensure that that is a solid investment for yourself. We're also going to talk about uh, you know yes in this market right now in Australia we're seeing almost every city government value uh, right now even 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 country towns government value right now. But which areas are actually have already moved substantially and have less potential time for growth? Uh, watch at the start. Like normally, there's in, it, normally in the Australian market, you'll see two or three cities that are correcting because we always harp on about timing. The timing is still very important. It, it, again, if you're buying into a market and it's got to go from here to here and it's already here and you're buying, yes, it can go to there, but there will, will be a correction. But if you're buying it here and you get that full growth cycle, is that not a better time to invest? So you know what is some little um, you know locations around the country right now uh, that you can actually invest in and still get the highest uh, opportunity for the highest potential capital growth. So we will drill down on that as well. Anyway, until next week, have a great weekend and uh, you know Peter from here, Peter from PPA, Kevin Real.